Covalent bonds are formed by sharing electrons between atoms compared to ionic when they transfer electrons. However, not all covalent bonds are the same. Sometimes the electrons are shared equally, such as in iodine, and sometimes the electrons are closer to the more electronegative element. In other words, the electrons are not shared equally, such as in water. A nonpolar covalent bond is a covalent bond in which the electrons are shared equally or have an electronegativity difference of 0.4 or less. Below is our electronegativity chart, and it says what type of bond is found in bromine. Bromine's formula is Br2. So Br minus Br, 2.8 minus 2.8, gives me a electronegativity difference of zero. Therefore, that would be a nonpolar covalent bond. It says what type of bond is found in methane. So methane looks like this. Carbon is 2.5 and hydrogen is 2.1. You do not need to multiply four times 2.1 because we're looking at each bond individually. So we have that bond, that, that one, and that one. They're all the same, and they're all 2.5 minus 2.1, or 0.4. Because they're exactly 0.4, it will be nonpolar. It's right at the threshold, but again, 0.4 or less is nonpolar, meaning the electrons are shared pretty equally. While polar covalent bonds are when the electrons are shared, but with an electronegativity difference of more than 0.4. So in HF, we have 4 and 2.1. So to subtract those, again, it's bigger minus smaller. So 4 minus 2.1 gives you a difference of 1.9. That's more than 0.4, so that's a polar bond. If a problem tells you to indicate the polarity of the bond, the first thing you're going to do is draw an arrow over the bond pointing to the element which is more electronegative. You would only do this if it's a polar bond. If it's a nonpolar bond, then you do not show the polarity because it's nonpolar. When drawing the arrow towards the more electronegative, this shows that the electrons are closer to that element. For example, in HF, it says in which way should the arrow point? Well, from our last example, we know that fluorine was 4.0 and hydrogen was 2.1. It points towards the more electronegative element, so it should point towards fluorine. Then it says assign slightly positive and slightly negative signs to each element. If you draw your arrow with a tail, then you can see that the hydrogen is slightly positive. The reason is my electrons that are in the bond are pulled towards fluorine because fluorine attracts them better than hydrogen. So the electrons in the bond are going to be closer to fluorine, making it seem like fluorine has a negative charge. It doesn't have a negative charge, it just has a slightly negative charge because it didn't gain the electrons, they're still being shared. And hydrogen is almost like it lost the electrons because in that tug of war contest, it's losing. So it's slightly positive. The slightly sign is a lowercase delta, which is like an S with its tail pulled up. So the more electronegative will always be slightly negative because the electrons will be closer to it. So it says, what are the total number of bonds in water? The first thing you need to do to solve these types of problems is draw water. Then we can count the no number of bonds. We have two bonds, single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, it doesn't matter what type of bond. We have two bonds. 
And both of these bonds are between hydrogen and oxygen. So they're either going to be both polar or both nonpolar. Looking at the electronegativity values, oxygen is 3.5 and hydrogen is 2.1. That's a difference of 1.4. Because the electronegativity difference is more than 0.4, both of those bonds are polar. So we have two polar bonds and no nonpolar bonds. So to draw my structure showing polarity, I will draw arrows above each of the bonds because each of them are polar. And they should be pointing towards oxygen because oxygen was less, was more electronegative. Then I assign my slightly positive, slightly negative, hydrogen slightly positive, and oxygen slightly negative. I only need to draw the slightly negative sign once because I only have one oxygen. And that should be your structure showing the polarity. This one, we have two carbons and six chlorines. You cannot have six chlorines and a carbon coming off a single carbon. So your general structure will be like so. I'm going to pause the video and answer these four questions on your own. Restart when you have an answer. For number of bonds, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Of the bonds, we have six that are between carbon and chlorine, and we have one that's between carbon and carbon. Looking at the electronegativity values, carbon is 2.5, chlorine is 3, so that's a difference of 0.5. So those are polar, and carbon minus carbon is going to be 0. So we have six bonds that were polar and one that was nonpolar. To draw it showing polarity, you should have drawn arrows over the six polar bonds, but no arrow in the center. And the arrows should have been pointing towards chlorine. So it should look like so. So we have six arrows all facing towards chlorine. Each carbon is slightly positive and all of your chlorines are slightly negative. This one also has the general structure. So make sure that you look at that structure though, and carbon only has six right now. So it's either going to need lone pairs or a double bond. Make sure you count up your valence and fill in this structure. And then answer your questions. Restart when you have the structure fixed. And the answer is uh, answered. So this should have been your general structure. And so we have five bonds. One, two, three, four, five. The one in the middle is a double bond, but it's still a bond. So we have five bonds. And of those five bonds, four of them are between carbon and fluorine, and one of them is between carbon and carbon. Fluorine has an electronegativity value of 4. Carbon is 2.5. Therefore, that's a difference of more than 0.4. So four of those are polar. The carbon minus carbon is going to be your nonpolar bond. And showing polarity, you should have had four arrows going towards fluorine, and your fluorines being slightly negative. 